Sí, Andrea Gavana, me voy a estar hablando sobre un Porto WX, eh, un cuento que nunca termina, en la traducción en español. Así que bueno, por favor, disfrutemos de la charla de él. Um, well, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry my talk is not in Spanish, but my, my Spanish is very, very bad. I could do it in Italian if you want, but I, I, I think it's better in English because pronouncing WX Python in Italian is not very nice. So it's better to do it in English. Um, so we're going to talk about WX Python and uh, uh, a general outline of the presentation. Uh, we're going to see a bit of WX Python architecture and the package, the package structure. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of the most um, asked for how-tos in our mailing list and when someone asks for help, uh, mostly related to Windows layout management, in which way you put your uh, controls inside the window, uh, using multiprocessing multi and threads in user interfaces, and how to, let's say, save your user interface, st interface state when uh, um, you log off or shut down your application and restore the state when you reopen your application. Uh, there is a fairly big part on the advanced generic widget library, which is uh, one of my creations. And in de it deals with the uh, owner drone custom controls. And a few lessons learned I have from WX Python and the current effort uh, to port WX Python to be compatible with Python 3. Um, one thing I would like to mention there are a few samples scattered around in the presentation. And you will see small red rectangles when a sample is available. You can download a, a zip archive of the sample at that address below or in the one even below at the bottom, the bitly address. WX Python. I'll tell you when we see a, a sample related to a, a slide. You can play with it if you download it, the zipped archive out of there. Um, okay, I don't know if you know it, but WX Python is built on a, a, upon a C++ library called w, WX Widget. Uh, both libraries are relatively uh, mature, uh, from 15 to 20 years of development, so they're very robust, mature, uh, production ready. Uh, the advantage of WX Python in general is that it uses uh, cus uh, sorry, um, native control provided by the platform itself. So on, on Linux, it will use the GTK uh, widget controls provided by the platform. On Windows, the Win32 ones. So it uses nat native widgets wherever it's possible. When, when it's not possible, uh, uh, WX Python provides generic implementation of the widget. Uh, I would suggest to you, if you like the library, to go through the demo, which is one of the best applications I've ever seen in general. And it shows everything for WX Python. Um, one thing I wanted to say, the next generation of WX Python, which is compatible with Python 3, is pretty much uh, ready. Uh, this version is called Phoenix. And uh, you can actually download uh, binaries for Linux, Windows, and Mac they're ready to be used already if you want to play with uh, WX Python and Python 3. There are few reasons why actually I chose WX Python about, about eight years ago, nine years ago. Uh, first of all, I like the idea that whatever platform I use, uh, the widget shown on screen are the one native provided by the platform itself. They're not drawn by the library, they're native ones. At the time, eight years ago, uh, WX Python uh, was one of the few with permissive license. Q, uh, QT, PyQT was a bit more restricted many years ago. And I put for you also a quote from Guido Van Rossum when comparing TK Inter with WX Python. Um, of course, if you are a, a new user uh, and want to approach the user interface world, my suggestion will be try all the user interface library available and choose the one you like the best. Mostly because there are many high quality alternatives, PyQt, PySide, PyGTK, there are many of them, which are all very good. So you try them all, choose the one you like. 
um, a bit on the architecture, as I told you, WX Python is based on WX widgets and it uses the platform underlying user interface. So you have the operating system, and a sub part of the operating system is the user interface. WX widget be built on the platform user interface, extended it, extended it a bit if needed. WX Python built on top of WX widget, and it extends the rest of WX widget widgets with the, the WX Python library, where you can find a lot of owner drone, custom control, uh, special classes that are not available in the C++ WX widgets implementation. Um, I'll show you a bit of numbers, let's say. Uh, the core classes are the one available on all the platform using native uh, controls. You have about 100 widgets and 45,000 line of code. These are the core classes. Then there are, mm, let's say, sub-modules or sub-packages, which are still uh, wrapped from the C++ uh, WX widgets implementation, but they're, uh, they're, mostly, uh, they're mostly generic implementation, not native one. And they are the one in blue. You have 18 modules, 50 different widgets. And probably the biggest part on the, in terms of Python code, pure Python code, is what we call WX lib, the WX Python library, which contains only custom controls, owner drone controls, and there are many, many of them, and it's actually the biggest part of WX Python with 250,000 lines of code with a lot of uh, controls you can play with. Uh, by the way, in just in case you have any question, don't wait for the end. You can stop me at any, any time. Mm. First, how to, let's say, Layout management, if you ever played with a user interface, you will know that it's very complicated to get the layout right when you resize a window, when you minimize, when you shrink it, whatever. It's very complicated to get it right. And WX Python provides a few alternatives on how to position your control inside the user interface. First one is what I, I started with, which is brute force positioning. You position your controls uh, giving exactly size and position inside the main window. Uh, my suggestion is don't even start with it because as soon as you change screen resolution, platform, operating system, anything, your lay layout will be screwed up. So don't do that. The best approach overall is to use what we call sizers, which are, um, let's say, a way to lay out an element in a one or two dimensional way inside your main window. We'll see it later. And another possibility is what we call uh, advanced user interface, which pro will we, we provide you with um, uh, the layout mechanism and many other fancy things, which we'll see in uh, one minute. My recommendation in general is to use the advanced user interface for the main window and the sizer for the sub-windows inside the main window. Um, regarding sizers, if any of you know Java, they look like uh, layout, the layout managers in Java. and the position and the size of any control you put in the main window depend on the sizer you choose and the algorithm the sizers use to position this item. You can make the, the, these controls expand, shrink, you can uh, adjust the space between them, you can adjust the way they, they look like, uh, you can specify an, an alignment, center, left, right, many, many different things. But the sizes are a bit hard at the beginning to learn. Uh, because sometimes my, my feeling was that it, they were a bit counterintuitive. But then when you start and you start learning, you will see that you will cannot do without them. Mm. Here is an example. I don't know if you can see the code, but in general, there is a, this window with four colored panels, a yellow on the left, then blue, gray, and green. And uh, what you see, there is an horizontal sizer which uh, which is actually laying out the yellow panel and the stack of the three other panels. Inside this horizontal sizer, there is a vertical sizer, which is laying out vertically the blue, the gray, and the green panel. And the dimension, the size, uh, the position of this colored panel will adjust automatically for you if you resize, shrink uh, the main window, the main interface window. As I told you, below here, Okay, there is a red rectangle. If you downloaded the sample from this address below, you can actually play with the, um, with the sample itself and see how it behaves. 
Um, the other way of handling layout management is using advanced user, user interface, uh, which is a, a library uh, available or in, or in, uh, as a C++ wrapped version in Python and also as a pure Python implementation. I implemented it in pure Python. In addition to the automatic layout, you get fancy stuff like uh, docking and floating windows. You can save the appearance of your user interface. Uh, you can customize the look and feel. Uh, transparent window effect. Many, many different things are done automatically for you. And if you look at uh, the same example as before, with the four colored panels, the syntax I've used to create this, uh, to lay out these uh, four colored panels is extremely easy. I just specify, uh, put one on the left, put one on the top, put one on the center, and one at the bottom. So the construction is relatively easy, and you get uh, the, your layout management and other fancy stuff automatically for you. Um, in addition to that, you get what I told you before, floating windows with the uh, uh, little docking icons and colored transparent frames. Uh, many, many uh, utilities that are normally not automatically available for you. Vertical toolbars, uh, uh, pull down uh, toolbars, this kind of stuff. And in general, uh, you can get quite impressive layout. This is an example of one of my applications. I don't know if you can see it very well, but hidden in this layout, there are four different, uh, let's say, sub-windows. One on the left, one on the center, one on the bottom, one on the right plus some hidden window, which I couldn't screen, uh, take a screenshot of because they're hidden. And all these windows, all these sub-windows are automatically managed by uh, the uh, advanced user interface um, package, automatically managed for me. I can detach them, float them, dock them, whatever I want. And it's extremely powerful. And in, com in combination with sizers, uh, it, will, it will give uh, the layout we want uh, almost effort effortlessly. Mm. Okay, this is one thing many people find complicated, and it is in general, because uh, combining threads or parallel processes with user interface is sometimes not very easy. Uh, if you want to use parallel processes with multiprocessing, uh, you can't use it directly on a WX Python window, frame, button, anything. WX Python widget or controls, they are not pickable, so you cannot use multiprocessing directly on them. And, and in any case, if you, if you spawn a new process, the new process doesn't know anything about your original user interface, so the child process cannot interact with the main process. Regarding threads, uh, it's unfortunate, but all the um, user interface framework, like, I don't know, um, in addition to WX Python, PyQt, PyGTK, they're, they're not thread safe. You cannot call user interface method from a separate thread. Uh, there are a few alternatives in WX Python to deal with that. I, I, I put the, the name of the thing uh, back there. Normally, I prefer to use a, a simple function called WX call, call after. It's a very simple function. You can call it inside the thread and it will uh, we'll call uh, your uh, user interface method in a thread safe way. I can show you a simple example. I don't know if you can see it, but at, at the bottom, I'm telling uh, in a thread, this longer running method is actually uh, run inside a thread, a separate thread. I'm using this uh, call after function to tell WX Python change the value of this progress, green progress thing in the window. And even though I'm running it through, from a thread, I'm calling a, a user interface, a, uh, yes, a user interface method. The WS call after, call after method makes it thread safe. And you can use 10, 15, 20 different threads. As long as you use this function to call a user interface method, you should be safe. You, you are safe. Um, there are a couple of samples, again, available for you if you want to play with, uh, which mix uh, user interface and Python threads. Mm. This is one, uh, one that like, uh, I like the most in general, using multiple processes, mostly because we use 
I use the combination of user interface and parallel process at, at work very often. Um, my suggest there are many ways to approach this, uh, this problem. My suggestion would be you start a separate monitoring thread. This thread itself then will spawn your, uh, will launch your separate processes, as many as you want. And then the thread will monitor the process, um, uh, let's say, behavior, the, the, the process, uh, the way the process is doing. Like I'm doing in the code, I'm using this long running method, which is run uh, in a thread, and using mul the multi processing um, module with four parallel processes. I just, uh, I just iterate to all these uh, processes uh, with a very simple function which runs some calculation. This thread, this long running method, which is implemented in a thread, actually monitors the behavior of the processes. Once a process is as finished, use the call after function to update something in the user interface. So it's a link between thread, parallel processes, and user interface. Um, you have as, as well a, 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 a sample for the parallel processes. Uh, my if you try the sample, my recommendation is don't use more processes than core that you have, because sometimes it doesn't make much sense. Um, um, these are, this is the last one regarding processes. This is when you want to, let's say, to run only a single external uh, process, like when you want to monitor an external application, which is printing out stuff in your standard input, or when you want to, I don't know, uh, monitor whatever your application is printing out on, on your standard input, you can use a parallel process which runs independently from your user interface and monitors whatever external application is printing to a standard output or standard error. In this case, I don't use the multiprocessing module because it's just a single separate process. What you do, you use the WX Python function for that, WX execute um, and WX process itself. Um, this, this parallel process is executed asynchronously, of course, and the way I, I put it in the sample itself, it will monitor whatever you print in the standard input and will put it in, in your user interface window. So if you print something on the standard input, uh, the parallel process will notice it, grab it, and put it on your user interface. Mm. This is another how-to. Uh, we, we, we usually are asked uh, very often. The, the problem is if you have a relatively complex uh, user interface, um, with lots of input data from the user, um, every time you close your application, if you do, not, you do not have a way to save the current state of the application, next time you reopen the application, the user will have to re-enter everything again, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so there is a, uh, this, kind, this library called uh, Persist in the uh, Pure Python library uh, in WX Python. Actually, this library will save the user interface state automatically for you. You don't have to do anything except registering, let's say, your window in the, in the library. And then this, this library will save you the window position, size, whatever, is the, in the, whatever text is in the text control, uh, whatever selection you have made in a tree, uh, whatever selection you've done in a list control, or pretty much all the um, uh, core widgets in WX Python are supported and uh, can be saved and restored every time you close or open your uh, application. There is a small example here. Um, everything you see except the one highlighted in blue, it's what, what you would do for a normal WX Python application without saving and restoring stuff. So this is a very simple, normal uh, user interface in WX Python. But I've added three lines telling WX Python to use the persist library. And on the second line, I register my one of the window inside the, the main interface. And on, uh, upon closing the, the, uh, the interface, I save the state of that window and unregister it. And then I close the main interface. What happened in this, in, in this way, let's see what I have later, yes. What happened in this way is whatever complicated your interface looked like, like the one I put on the left, 
is one of the sample in the pers persist library. However complicated it is, however, uh, whatever selection you do, whatever text you enter, whatever date you choose, it doesn't matter because we closed it, everything gets saved in a config object or cpickle or wxconfig. There are many other formats you can save it. It gets saved automatically for you. When you reopen it, you will see the, the user interface status exactly the same way as it was when you closed it. So the user doesn't have to re-enter anything. You don't have to restore anything yourself. You, know, you don't have to bother about cleaning up on close the application or putting everything nice again when you open the application. Um, as I told you before, pretty much all the um, uh, core controls are supported by the Persist library and almost all the owner drone controls, custom controls. Mm. Let's see where we are. Okay, uh, now we get to a more, uh, let's say, something that is more personal to me uh, about custom controls. There is a bit of a difference between a custom control and an owner drone control. A custom control doesn't need to be drone, owner drone, or doesn't, need, doesn't require you to actually paint the control on screen yourself. A custom widget is simply maybe an extension of an existing core class when you add some method, some properties, but that's it. The original appearance is still provided by the platform, not by you. What, if you want to draw the control yourself, to paint it on screen yourself, uh, that gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of behavior and look and feel because you design it yourself. The problem is, the problem comes from the fact that if you design it yourself, you lose the fact that the control is native, it's not native anymore because you cannot uh, foresee all, if a user is using a dark team on Linux or a clean, clear team on Windows, there's no way you can foresee that. So your control will not look native. And the second one, uh, regarding accessibility, accessibility um, no normally the platform provided the native controls, they already provide support for people with accessibility problems like uh, uh, site problems or um, uh, mobility problems and so on. If you're going to, to draw your own custom, custom control, there is no way you can provide this kind of support in your own control. Um, a few things normally, a few things, sorry, one thing that normally happens is that we get questions about how do I implement a specific widget? What do I, where do I start for? First thing you have, to, you have to start for, to look for, is to look at the demo and look inside our, the, the WX Python library because 90% of the time that control will be already present somewhere. Someone will already be, will have already been done, will already done, sorry, uh, created this control for you. So don't, do not reinvent the wheel. Just look inside the demo if it's there. If you can't find it, okay, there are two possibilities. See if the C++ WX widgets library has a generic implementation of that control, or in the end, if there is nothing, write your own. Start from scratch and write your own. Um, I, I'll have a, a couple of examples of uh, the way I ported a C++ widget from w, WX widgets, WX Python, and other examples in which I've written them myself from scratch. Uh, the advanced generic li uh, widget library contains only own and drone controls. There are 37 of them. Uh, it's pretty much the only part of WX Python documented using Sphinx for the classic uh, WX Python. Uh, there are many, many demos and, uh, in the WX Python demo. Of course, being uh, pure Python, we don't have to depend on the C++ WX widgets library, so everyone that knows Python can contribute for a patch or new ideas when the code is pure Python. Um, I have a few examples for you. This is actually um, a derivation of an existing control in WX widget. On the left, you have the one provided by the platform. It's a tree, a tree control. You have the one provided to, uh, by the platform, the native one. On the right, you have what I call custom tree control, which is, which is completely own and drawn. Every, everything you see on screen is drawn by, uh, by Python code. It doesn't rely on, on any, anything native. There are a few uh, 
uh, additions with respect to the native one. You get separator, you get multi-line text items, you get multiple images on, a, on any item, uh, uh, you get gradient uh, selection, many, many different things. And actually, uh, right now when I write a user interface, I start directly with the one draw one, mostly because I only develop on Windows and uh, I don't mind uh, the, the, the owner drawn tree control not being native because at least on Windows, it looks extremely native overall. Mm. Another example is, did I jump something? No. Another example is again derived from a, a generic implementation in WX widget. It's a list control. On the left, you have the, the native one provided by the platform, and on the right, the one completely over and drawn. You can, the deep, okay, again, there are many, many differences, many more options you can have on the owner drone one. Uh, you can attach a widget to an item. You can use gradient selection, multi-line, different images, different size of images, your own renderer to render the, the item on a column. Uh, there are many options. Actually, I think the demo doesn't even list them all. And again, you have a sample if you want to play with it. Um, I don't know how many of you are Windows user. I don't think that many overall. Uh, but <laughs> uh, unfortunately, from uh, uh, let's say Microsoft Office 2007, I think we Microsoft switched from uh, the normal menu um, behavior for Windows to the ribbon bar, which is the thing you see at the top. It's a big a mix of tab and menu and uh, toolbars and this kind of stuff. And someone had, a, had the idea of trying to write one in, generically in WX widget. And in the end, I tried myself, I, I simply converted the C code to WX Python. So what you see there is simply, um, is simply um, a generic implementation in Python of the ribbon, the Microsoft, Microsoft ribbon. I don't think Linux people or Mac people. We're going, they're going to use it, but it's available for all the platform and runs on all the platforms. Um, this is another one. This, uh, this is an example of something that you can create uh, by yourself. It's not derived by, uh, from any um, existing uh, generic implementation. It's something I've written myself. It's a simple, let's say, thumbnail generator. When you have a folder full of images, and you want to, to show a, a series of thumbnails. This is my daughter, by the way. If you want to see a series of thumbnails, this thing will create them automatically for you. You provide a folder, and this thing will run on separate threads and soon in, on separate processes, and will generate uh, the thumbnail lightning fast. And you will see them displayed there with your, their captions, and uh, you can hover them. You have information on the thumbnail, on the original file, this kind of stuff. And probably the last one on the create your own. Uh, again, for a Windows user, uh, at, at least for me at work, many people use Excel to store their data. And what I wanted to do was to provide a way to show in a WX Python interface exactly the same data format. Um, colors, uh, font, everything that was in an Excel file. So I wanted to, uh, uh, to get what, we, what is called, what you get uh, is what you some see, something like that. What you see is what you get, but I don't remember. So I created this XLS grid, which is a pure Python control, doesn't depend on Excel. But then again, if you compare the two, on the left, you have the pure Python implementation, and on the right, you have Microsoft Excel. I would say they are relatively close overall. And you can, you, can, you can use it to just slurp in an Excel file. It will read the Excel file automatically for you and display it in the same format. In the same, uh, you will have the same appearance as the Excel file itself. Mm. OK, uh, a couple of things uh, on the lesson learned. I don't know how many of you know WX Python in general. Is there any WX Python knowledgeable person? Anyway, um, normally when you build a user interface uh, and you want to lay out your elements, your widgets, 
um, if your user interface becomes complicated, it's very highly probable that you're going to mess up some uh, hierarchy between uh, a child window and a parent window, or you're, you're going to mess up a, 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 a sizer, a position of a window inside a, inside a sizer, this kind of stuff. The user interface will appear not, not to be very responsive or will appear to be a bit messed up when you resize it or, or uh, shrink it. Um, one thing every, uh, all of us suggest to the new, new user, if you have a problem, you don't know where the problem is, use the widget inspector tool. It's something that you activate with one line of code inside WX Python and will show you everything that is on your user interface, sizer hierarchy, window hierarchy, window position, window name, whatever is the content, everything which is in your application and it does all the work for you. You can easily spot where the problems are. Second one, um, WX Python, as all the other user interface libraries, use events to communicate between the user and the, your actual application. When the user does something, WX Python dispatch an event and you can catch this event and process it if you want. The problem is there are hundreds of events you can, uh, you can catch and, and dispatch and, um, and uh, analyze. So don't try and guess them. Either use the documentation or use this tool called events in style, which for every widget will tell you what kind of window style available you have, what kind of events get emitted. And it's extremely handy because it uses the, always the latest documentation because it's pulled by, from the web. Uh, for the expert of uh, WX Python, um, when you have to listen to an event emitted, emitted by uh, your application, always listen to this event uh, on the widget you want this event process. It's complicated to explain, but uh, if, if you generally, let's say, if you want to listen, uh, if, you, if you listen to the event generically, in the, in the second call I have, self.bind, the event will get propagated to all the other widgets in your uh, interface and up to the main frame. Normally, you don't want that. You want the user, when he, when he pushes a, but a button, you want, you want the button to listen to this uh, message, not everything else. So bind an event, listen to the, the event from the widget to generate the event. Um, another thing I learned if, if you're thinking of building your own custom control, uh, really look if there is a generic C++ implementation because WX widgets and WX Python are extremely close in terms of syntax and code. It's very easy to port one to the other. Um, when you write over and drone controls, all, all the modern platform uh, now have uh, automatic double buffering. Use it if you can. And every time you try and report a bug, an issue, whatever, uh, on the mailing list, remember platform, version, and sample application to reproduce the problem. Um, okay, this is the last part. is about the, the effort to port WX Python to Python 3. Um, the effort started a few months back because at the beginning there was very little interest from the community to port WX Python to Python 3. Uh, at the moment, you, the status is that if you want to use the WX Python with Python 3, you can already. If you want, if you can, you, if you use only core widgets, the platform native ones. We moved from uh, uh, Doxygen to Sphinx for the original documentation, and as, last time I checked, Python 2.7 and Python 3.2 plus are supported. Mm, we refer to this project as Phoenix. Uh, to distinguish it from the classic version of WX Python. This is a small diagram of what we do uh, to generate the wrapper for uh, uh, Phoenix and to use in Python 3. Uh, we have a, w a WX widgets on the left, everything, C++ code, whatever is, uh, is there on the left. Then we use a series of uh, a number of Python uh, scripts here to extract, tweak the C++ code, change the signature of some method, exclude some other method, and so on. This, this uh, script, in the end, generate something for the Sphinx, 
uh, uh, tool for the doc and some wrapper for the SIP library. We moved from Swig to SIP to generate the C++ wrapper in Python. Um, one big problem we had with Python 3.2 and earlier is that uh, Unicode uh, string like that, Unicode object, they raised a syntax error in Python 3.2, Python 3.1. I know it's been corrected in Python 3.3, but then again, if we said we support Python 3.2, uh, we have we will have to change thousand and thousand of this U something we have in, in the in WX Python library. There are thousands of them. So what we ended up is that is we've, we wrote a bridge tool to support both Python 2 and Python 3, which is similar to the 6 package in Python. There are many other things that were more uh, involved, like cpickle versus pickle and print as a function and print as a non-function. Uh, I won't comment on that, but um, there are few, very few backward incompatibili incompatibilities between uh, Phoenix and the older WX Python. The first one, that the previous overloaded methods, you will have a different name depending on what, you, uh, what kind of argument you passed. There you had set, set dimension, you passed a, 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 a coordinate in X, a coordinate in Y, a width, an A or you can have a set rect for a rectangle, set size for a size, and so on. In Phoenix, everything is called set size, and you can pass whatever you want as an argument. And there are a few others, uh, other changes. Uh, these are very easy to fix overall. If you have to port your application from uh, uh, Python 2 to Python 3 and using the, w the new Phoenix WX Python. The current status is that, as I told you before, pretty much all the uh, native widgets are supported, are working, are Python 3 re ready. Almost all the advanced generic widgets uh, I wrote are Python 3 ready. There are daily snapshot build for the documentation for the binary release, and you can try it out. I su suggest you try it out. Um, as for the documentation, we moved from Doxygen to Sphinx. And it, now the, the generated documentation are so much nicer than it, they were before. So my suggestion is you go and use the new version of the docs. And if you want to contribute, of course, we always need people contributing importing to Python 3, some of the pure Python code, and to adapt stuff to the document, documentation. Um, as far as I know, we should be ready by, I don't know, mid next year, but this is just a guess. Uh, I'm not sure. This, this was the roadmap. Probably we'll be ready by, by mid of next year. The transition from previous WX Python Classic to the new one uh, in Phoenix, it might be a bit of an effort, but I ported the entire advanced generic widget in six hours. This 150,000 lines of code, so it's not that complicated overall. Uh, and of course, if you want to, try, please do try out the new version of WX Python and report back the bugs because we, we have very few testers in that sense. Um, I leave you with some uh, some of the uh, some links just in case you you might need them. And uh, if you have any question. Well, you can try in Spanish, but maybe I can understand. Okay. Okay, so the question was you using WX Mozilla, which is now, is now discontinued, to embed a, a browser into a WX Python application. Um, if you're using WX Python 2.9, which is now one year old, if you, if you download that, there is a new component under the WX HTML2 library, which will use whatever is native to your platform to display a, a web page. And you can use uh, CSS, JavaScript, anything. It's just a normal browser directly embedded into uh, WX Python control. Yes. Uh, 
uh, it normally is built against the latest, which at the moment is 2.9.5. Uh, but it gets it gets it gets built pretty much every day. So it, you are not going to wait until the version three. No, no, no. Uh, the, the way the C++ guy the the guys do, we don't really care. I mean, they do their their own development. Uh, uh, we, uh, this definition, um, it's unfortunate, this definition of stable, unstable for WX Python and WX Widget was probably the most unfortunate uh, classification of any library you can think of. There is nothing unstable in 2.9 or 2.7 or 3.1. It's been out for one year or more. I use it from the very beginning. One thing you can think of, it's unstable the, the first week from 2.9.0, maybe it's unstable. But once it moves, 2.9.1, 2. 2. 2. So, uh, when uh, Phoenix would be, uh, would be released, uh, it would be used in the wild production? There are, there, may, there are already some few people using it in production. Most people, some of the people that would not need the custom controls, if they only need the core ones, they can use it in production. It's the same as uh, WX Python, but it, it has a better handling of the GIL. Um, it, it has a better, let's say, better coding structure under under all. Okay, uh, that's a good question because I, I, uh, when I have a, a complex layout to build, I get bored to do it by hand. It's boring, honestly. So what I do, I, I fire up WX Glade which is the Glade, Glade version for WX Python, and I build the visual layout with it. I generate the code, and then I, I'll change it whatever I want, but in the way I like it. I use WX Glade all, pretty much every day. Um, there is something already, uh, something we call UI Action Simulator which is uh, something that we, whatever you do with your mouse or keyboard or everything will record what you do and replay it back. And as far as I understand, there are a few people in, in WX Widget library, the C++ guys, they're implementing something automatic using the UI action simulator to automatically test the user interfaces. Uh, I'm no expert in that area, so. Not that I know of, no.